Welcome to Season 2, mateys. First, thank you for such a tremendous and successful Season 1. Honestly, without your support, we could not have been able to make this little project of ours. And, and honestly, it wouldn't have come to fruition. It really means the world to us, and I cannot express just how much that, I mean, I can't express how much it means. Suffice it to say, thank you. A thousand times thank you. Secondly, we have a Discord. If you're not already a member, we would love for you to join us. Come, hang out, tell us your favorite moments in the show. Share your food recipes, your pet pictures, your songs, your movies, whatever else you're geeking out to. Um, come hang out with other like-minded nerds. We'd love to have you. And if you're so inclined, come and share your most cursed food options. Because we all know that Johnny would absolutely love to tell us how much he'd like to smash your absolutely most cursed food choices. Lastly. I'm going to leave you with this. Our summer Patreon drive is still ongoing. We have less than a month left. If you're a fan of the show and you'd like to show the show some support, a little bit of financial support, please consider backing us on Patreon. We completely understand if you're unable to and trust us, we get it. And none of our shows will ever be paywalled. So every single one of our shows will be available on our public feed at some point in time. So we get it if you're not able to, but we would absolutely love if you could help support us financially. And if you're not able to, totally understood. We'd appreciate it if you could just share the show with other like-minded nerds and fellow gamers. And if you think they'd get a kick out of our raucous adventure, please share the show. And maybe throw a review or a rating of a show out there too, because that'd help our algorithms and our metrics. That'd really be awesome. All right, you've heard enough of me. Shut up, Jason. Take us out. Onward to season two. out like this. I have a bass guitar in my closet. <laughs> I sold mine. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the 25 North Podcast. We're here. We are ready to go. Season 2 is upon us. What is up? I have the crew with me. Say hi, everybody. Hello, Hello everybody. Howdy, howdy. So what's going on? What? How? How has the break been for Rachel and Corey? Uh... Good. I've made all the monster parts into things. So, you know, finally that check mark off the to-do list. Within the last six hours, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I did some work right away, and then I waited two weeks and then did the rest of the work. Like a true procrastinator. Let's go! I don't know any other way to do things. Yeah. I've, uh... Yeah, I've got some changes that'll be going into the Discord probably tomorrow, actually. Woo! So, nice. Yeah. Nice. That'll be that'll be fun. Nice well, little change up change. in the layout. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were talking yeah. about like you yourself. I, was oh, like, no. I, I, I uh, saw that you that you left your job, but I did. Yeah, I am recording this from the standpoint of an unemployed person. Holy shit! How does that so, feel? Oh, it's it's fine. Okay. I'll just. I'll just become a streamer and like become super famous instantly. That's how oh it my works, God. right? Yeah, totally. totally. Oh yeah, win it big. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, but you had there's your first, tons of jobs here. You had your oh, yeah. first full night's sleep in like months. So oh I God. did. I zonked out last night somewhere between like nine and nine thirty, uh, and woke up in my bed at like quarter to six ish. Um, definitely fell asleep in my computer chair though. So 
I at least had the courtesy to my own body to get up and move into my bed at some point in the night. Um, Fair enough. So that's cool. I even turned off my computer, but I have no recollection of no recollection of doing it. That's for sure. Nice. I broke my ankle yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got that yeah, going less, for me. Less fun than a full night's sleep. That's for sure. I did get eight and a half hours of sleep though. So oh well. I got that going for me. Nice little bonus right there. <laughs> yeah, it's the balance of life. Right, right, right. The duality of man. You get a broken ankle, but man, you get that eight hours of sleep. And oh, it feels great. <laughs> woke up woke up in pain because my ankle hurt like hell. But oh, yeah, it, it, it fucking hurt. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. It's I don't know about y'all, but um, I know when I when I really injured myself, to the point where I should probably go to the ER because as soon as it happens, I get that feeling where I like I feel like I'm going to vomit. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yes, okay. that feeling. That feeling is called shock. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's like I, as soon as I'm like, okay, I I got hurt really bad. As soon as I feel like I'm going to throw up, it's like I hurt re- really really bad. Whoops! Uh, but I was an idiot. I finished mowing the lawn on my bum ankle. And then I and then the battery on my battery powered lawnmower died, and there's one strip of grass right outside my window here that did oh, not get mowed. And I'm like, fuck it. you, fuck it. I'm not going into the garage and coming back out to finish this. I can do it later. I went into the house, um, wrapped my ankle in an ace bandage, propped it up, and I'm like, nope. No, nope. I'm going to drive myself to the ER because I was I was alone this weekend. Mm. So um drove myself to the ER and spent seven hours at the ER. Whoa. So did you actually have to manually drive or is that like a smart route in the in yeah. these modern cars? <laughs> it was my left ankle, so I didn't need to use it. Oh, nice. Oh, thank yeah. God you I, didn't don't, have I don't have a manual, so uh, I don't have a manual. It's a uh, I have automatic. A, I have a, a Tesla, so it's a one pedal driving. So it's um, you it's it's if you've ever driven like a snowmobile, uh, why am I telling two people from Texas what a snowmobile is? <laughs> okay, <laughs> have you ever driven like a um like a what are they called? The snowmobiles that go in the ocean. What are they called? Them um? ski jet jet ski do the jet ski jet ski yeah ski do's a brand. <laughs> yeah, um, where it's just like if you if you give it gas, it goes, but if you let off the gas, it automatically breaks. Yes, hmm. that's that's basically how a Tesla is with the one pedal driving. So if you push down, it'll go. But if you let off the, the pedal, it'll slow down to start braking because the engine uses magnets. That's really cool, cool. actually. So, yeah, that sounds way easier than driving left footed because you broke your right ankle and you refused to. Oh, yeah. Stop driving yourself to school. I got I really good I at driving with my left foot at one point. Woof. I would have uh, I would have Ubered at that point or. um Called a friend out in the countryside called, where I live. There were no friends and no Ubers. <laughs> I would have called uh, Rachel's brother-in-law, probably. Yeah, he would have come and helped you if they were in town. They were. I don't know where. I don't know where the Balcoms are. I visited <laughs> them yesterday, so they were there. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Um. So Jackson Lunar, hi. How are you guys? Welcome to the show. Oh, we're doing great. I'm super excited for this. I am excited and nervous. I it's like the combination of the two. It's like when you want to like throw up, but you're like, no, not yet. I'm too excited. <laughs> because you injured yourself really bad. I was gonna say, yeah, also in shock. Yeah. yeah, also shock. Uh, completely unrelated. Eat Didn't... something sweet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just I'm I'm very excited. Jackson and I have been talking about uh this like all like last week together we're like hey are you excited for are you excited to record are you excited to record it's been so funny yeah i'm i'm very pumped i even i even went out and even though all the pathfinder resources are available online i went out and bought myself the book because i like having the book and yeah i'm i'm, I'm so excited <laughs> you're talking you're talking to three people here who are like yep mm-hmm the books mm-hmm. nothing abnormal right about that i definitely have the entire collection for first edition and 
I think there's like 16 or 17 core there. rule books for that. So I just, I guess, got this textbook of a monster here. Yep. Yeah, you could bludgeon somebody to death with that thing. Oh, yeah. easily. I thought the D and D five E book was kind of big when I first got it. Well, oh, that's God. That's well, nothing. That the the PF two E one is the game master's guide and the player's handbook in one. That's like, the true. whole second half is the game master's guide. It's so big. Yeah, it looks like still- it's a. You put the you put the D and D, the player handbook and the the bot or the uh, DM guide together, even with the hardcovers. That's still bigger. It is. <laughs> it looks like a clue murder weapon, essentially. It, was, it also it was looks Jackson way in. better on a bookshelf because Very of its you know, sturdy spine. Yeah, it was Jackson in the library with the Pathfinder Two ebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we're going to have to talk about one of these days. Uh, a recent hobby of mine that I've gotten into is buying books based on how their spines look. Oh, yeah. Um, and I've come across a couple of really fantastic reads thanks to it. But I'll have to uh, I'll have to take a look and make sure I've got a few ready to discuss. Because I don't want to just go off about the how beautiful the covery on the Priory of the Orange is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so pretty. Priory of the Orange. Soft co- cover. Yes, mm. um, I like I like the good. name. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I've been getting really into fantasy written from non-European backgrounds recently. Let's nice, go. Um, nice. So I found a couple of really good artists that are based out of like the Middle East or from the Middle East. Ooh. So a lot of their fantasy has more like that Arabian Nights vibe to it, mm-hmm. and I'm finding that to be very fulfilling compared to the hey, this is England, but it's not England. Uh, that you get with a lot of other fantasy novels. So, um, yeah, like the Sand Sea Chronicles is one that I've just recently picked up the first book in because the cover was beautiful and found out it's written by like a female refugee who left the Middle East during time of conflict and managed to build themselves into an author upon landing in North American shores. Um, so it's got a really cool flavor to it that I can't wait to like dive further into. Yeah. I know that, um, their, um, Saladin Ahmed wrote, um, what was it called? The throne of the crescent moon, which is a a middle Eastern fantasy book. Um, it won a bunch of awards like back in 2012, 2013. Cool. So another um, one that I have on my hit list, I haven't seen it in stores or online yet, um, but the cover is beautiful from what I've seen for photos. Uh, I can't remember the name. I want to say it's the spear cuts through water, um, but it's like a mid fantasy novel written by like a Polynesian descent, like Ooh, Islander nice. person. So I'm expecting it to have really cool flavor as well. That sounds rad. Oh, yeah. yeah. I definitely so want to check out that book, too. It's cool finding this realm of fantasy that's starting to pop up in English that's from very different cultural standpoints than what I'd say we're traditionally used to seeing in North America and Europe. So um, I'm really digging that recently here. Yeah, and for a while, too, there was a, a series of um, Japanese fantasy novels um, and I don't remember what it was called, but I'll, I'll have to I'll have to remember what the series name was. Mm-hmm. Um, that were really really good, and I can shoot that your way too. But yeah, it's told from an Asian perspective, which is cool. great. But I would I very mean, much we, we probably love get, to take a, little, a look at that. We probably get a little bit more of Asian fantasy just because you know of the prevalence of anime and stuff. So we're probably a little more used to Asian fantasy than Middle Eastern or African or you know, Indochina kind. Yeah, for sure. I want sure. to look into seeing if there's something like that for, uh, for like Latin American cultures, like oh, old sure. Aztec stuff. <gasps> yeah. Aztec stuff's always Old amazing, Aztec right? stuff? I have a couple books I can recommend if that's something you're interested Ooh. in. I'll have to go to the shelf, but uh, yeah, that's right in my vein of interest. Oh, if you I like want fantasy and I like <laughs> historical fantasy. 
if you want trashy arc of, of our own books that got like turned into like fictional novels that people can read, I'm your girl. You want to read really <laughs> trashy Twilight books? Man, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, we've got the real books in the fan I, fiction. I listen. I always love reading the people that are like, I'm going to turn my fan fiction into a real book. And it's like, I eat up that garbage. It's delicious. It's a delicious yeah, brand. There's a market for it. Yeah. I keep thinking I need to turn myself into the next Chuck Tingle. I have it in me. <laughs> Do it's it. There. Do it. To be fair, one of my most recent purchases, I found out that there was a Nightmare Before Christmas novelization of like nice. after the movie uh and it follows like sally as now she's the queen and everything's so sad for her boohoo but i'm like my god is this the best garbage and it's delicious thank you thank you to this author well <laughs> like you know, it's not thank you to the authors that's the thank truth the it doesn't matter what it is you know what's not garbage though what's not garbage? this adventure yeah <laughs> this adventure is not garbage <laughs> because <laughs> Where we're going to pick up for the listeners and the party is the party is aboard a ship. They have just taken off from Rumplank. It is a four day journey between Rumplank and Seaview. And just to upset Rachel, I'm going to have you all track your rations. Track. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I was about to start to a whole nother spreadsheet. Uh. I, I played Jade Regent. It's 90% resource management. Like, because every person <laughs> takes up more consumption, but they have different job roles, and some jobs produce food, and some use more consumption, but some use no consumption. I've got the spreadsheet for this if you really want to play that game. No, no, we're not playing that game. We're not playing oh, that game. God. But oh. um, at this point, uh, Prince Kalupi has has taken command of the ship as commander of the Chromatic Queen. Now, the Chromatic Queen, having been docked for 200 some odd years underneath Shiver Skull Mountain, is in desperate need of repair and um, just general upkeep. So you all were on in Rumplake on Gold Crop for a few weeks while the chromatic queen was going through some upgrades. So at that point you were able to level up. Now we have three characters that don't need to go through their level up, but I will ask. Syl, how does, how's level four looking for Syl? Uh, level four was all about, uh, being scary. Apparently. Uh, so it's, uh, Bowie's memories, uh, resurfacing. So, uh, Skill training and intimidation, class feat of dread striker, so you know better at hitting things that are scared and intimidating glare, so good at scaring things. So Frightened. yes, doubling yeah. down on that frightened condition. All the scaring, yes, frightened. Technical now, words. now when um, now having Prince Kalupi as commander of the Chromatic Queen and having a new crew. I'm going to quick go over some of the crew members that you'll find on this ship, both for you and for our audience. So obviously you have Commander Prince Kalupi, who's commander, commanding of the ship. On top of that, we have Garnacor. Garnacor is a female Hardigan bosun. Basically, the, heart, the bosun is kill, skilled at keeping sailors in line and handing out discipline. Um, you can tell that she wasn't always a sailor. As a matter of fact, uh, she's really beefy and muscled, probably the most beefy and muscled out of, well, maybe not some of the, maybe not Zaba, but other than Zaba, probably the most beefy and well-muscled person on this ship. Um, you also will know, will know about, uh, Sam Blaine. So Sam Blaine is a male Gamayan doctor, the ship's uh, surgeon and physiker. Incredibly handsome. He is a, obviously a Gamayan, so a parrot person. His plumage is white and mauve. So very handsome looking uh, Gamayan. 
But basically, while you're on the ship, he will be there to provide any kind of treat wounds or treat disease, basically, uh, whenever you need it. Then you have the twins, Fippin and Mippin Humcakes. These are two Orpok cooks. So Fippin is male and Mippin is non-binary. They are the cooks on the ship. Slate Hoda is a female Kragrag who is the ship's scout. And the last member of the crew is Leafling, who is a blood mouse. Nobody's quite sure how Garnicor managed to slip in this mauve colored, colored blood mouse aboard the vessel, but the blood mouse has made its home on the ship. In addition, we have the three new crew members um, other than Cell. So real quick, we can go over the crew members. And if you want to know a little bit more, you can check out the uh, what's the preview episode that we published right before this episode. So go back and listen to that. You'll get a little bit more about the characters. But for those who didn't listen to that and came right into episode one of season two, Let's go. Let's go over through for the three new characters. Take it away, Jackson. All right. Um, let's see. So Vesuviak, um, I'd say he probably on the ship would be uh, helping out the doctor as much as possible, uh, seeing as they are a cleric of Serenray. They are a magma dragon fire cleric. Um, that is more than willing to like get their hands dirty and do any of the uh, any of the work that would help relief uh, relieve the doctor a little bit. Um, and despite his nature, he would probably try and urge as much mercy as possible with any sort of uh, disciplinary dealings that might need to go on, but also would pretty much only be like, don't be too hard on them. Oh, you're not gonna? Alright, fine. <laughs> and then walk off. <laughs> so, through obligation alone is he merciful. <laughs> nice. Who wants to go next? Uh, I can go next. Why not? Uh, so, we spot a, a human uh, dark, uh, dark skin with black hair uh, that has some freckles of uh, like salt and pepper in it, essentially uh, currently right next to the uh, scout if I remember correctly uh, uh, he's just kind of looking over the uh, like helping out as best as he can uh, but you can also see that he's currently hitting the sauce a little early as they say in the business he has his water skin full of rum that he's just slightly taking sips on as he is looking at uh, this, uh, or helping out anyways. And yeah, I think every once in a while he's just looking around and he just like mutters to like the other person that's helping out. He's like, look at these guys, am I right? Nice. And lastly, we are presented with Zaba Otrav. Uh, he currently, I'd imagine, is sitting on the deck somewhere and looks kind of wide and bulbous, if not fat, um, until he stands up upright. And he's actually 11 foot six frog demon, um, dressed in a super finely tailored black suit with red and golden filigree of demonic symbols and uh, fables that he claims is his own uh, throughout it. But something kind of odd is both sides of the the outer edges of both the pants and the jackets have large slits down them that seem to be tied with what looks like some sort of stretchy material uh, to account for him standing up and sitting down uh, without destroying this very nice suit on a very not nice person. Um, he's a barbarian. Beautiful. And sitting up by the ship's wheel 
is we find Syl and the commander, Prince Kalupi. Kalupi turns to Syl and says, So, Syl, now that you've had a chance to stretch the chromatic queen's legs a bit, how does she... How does she ride compared to what you... You rode on your way out of the mountain. Oh, uh... Better, I, I guess. I don't... I don't know much about boats. Um... Well, never mind. I can see... Well, we have quite the journey ahead of us, he says, completely interrupting you. We have quite the journey ahead of us. My father, the king, has... He has made contact with Seaview. And in four days' time, well, we will be... Well, let's just say that we will be... Ha- we will be having some political discourse with the ruling council of Seaview. I will meet with the council for reasons. Well, but perhaps the most most important is to show off the Chromatic Queen, the new treasure of Rumplank. But it is also to great to two reasons being twofold. One, to secure some resources to commence to continue our trade discussions between Rumplank and Seaview which I have been put in charge of. And I know, well, we all know that I'm going to do a great job at that. Who am I kidding, right? Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And secondly, to secure you admittance into the prestigious Academy of Tastes. For research purposes, of course. Right. Um, If... What's your 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 friend, the 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 witch? If what she says is true, as a name, yeah. Mm-hmm. If what she says is true, that uh, Poppy, that Poppy's well, her limited art skills, shall we say, um, are so unspecific, then we will have to go and check out the detailed maps of the Indigo Isles foremost explorer Gustavia Scalahue and I want you to go ahead and make me a check Give, go ahead and give me um, let's say a society check or Indigo Isles lore if you have it yeah. you can roll society oops I left it public still knows lots of things let's see here do you? I do not yeah, you 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 don't know anything. Uh, what you would you what you would know is that that name Gustavius Scala blah, 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 whatever yeah is um, you would know that they are pretty famous and they started some kind of fancy schmancy academy over in Seaview. I know that Procta told me to go here and do important things. That's yeah. That's about you know that's good enough. So, well, Stavio, blah blah blah. Got it. Well, I can assure you that um, I will do my best to secure yourself. And he looks looks down at you. I'm still not sure about the three you made a decision on. The human, first of all, he's human. The the croaker and the well, the dragon. The dragon would probably be useful, but I don't know about the other two. I'm sure they'll all be useful. I mean, you really shouldn't, you know, judge them based on their ancestries. I I know they're not from around here, but... I mean, neither am I. Well, I just want what's best, and... Well, don't we deserve what's best? Isn't that right, Sel? Of course it is. Of course it is, it's right. Just (sighs) don't forget about the bigger picture here. I mean, I know your trading stuff is all important and, you know, all that, but there's more at stake here than Rumplank's money. Of course. Of course. Yes. Who could I be kidding? Ha! Yes. And kind of trails off. And of course, a sea 
begins to be all around you. You see Rumplank at your stern and Sea View, the largest settlement on Bluebell Island at your aft. The crew is pleased to be sailing because the day is beautiful. It's a fine day. Very well traveled. Um, These these waters are traveled constantly between uh, Bluebell Island and Gold Crop. So Rumplank and Sea View, there's uh, there's like anybody who's who's captain the ship has has traveled this way a number of times. So it's nothing you're really going to have to worry about when it comes to any kind of random encounters or anything. Um, like I said, these are well traveled waters. What I will do now is that for the other three. I will let you go ahead and make me some rolls if you want. Whoa. If you wanted to roll C- uh, Society or Indigo Isles lore from your character sheets, you can go ahead and do so. Society. W- what or... about sailing lore? <laughs> uh, no, not that quite one... applicable. No, because this is more to know about Sea View itself. Uh, oh, I yeah. think it's a plus zero for me regardless, so let's I've see. I've got a plus nine well, to society. There's, there's, a, there's a 20 on every die, Jackson. There sure is. Let's see if I get it. Well, I got 13. That, that's, yeah. n- that's not it. <laughs> that's not bad. Let's see. Let me do my society roll. Uh, this should be it. Yes. <laughs> oh, let's go, baby. <laughs> Dang. Even though Timothy Bono is not from these islands, Timothy has spent enough time in Rumplank talking, chatting, and flirting with a number of people to know that um, this is a critical success, by the way. Holy shit. This, the, to know that Seaview, uh, Bluebell Island is not only known for the Orpox that produce excellent food, but also for the bluebell flower that gives the island its name. Oh, now, the geez. plants have many uses. So those bluebell flowers have many uses in rope making, dyeing, weaving, any sorts, any number of things. So think of, um, almost think of it as like hemp fibers, okay. but, but colored hemp fibers in that you could also dye blue with it. Now, on top of that, you know that Sea View, or you've overheard that Sea View, sea View is overseen by a four member council. Each council member has a specific area that they are in control of, so that they have like authority over in when it comes to Sea View's economy or society. Now, they can be fractitious sometimes, but overall they do work together for the good of the city. So that's what you're able to, to put uh, to gather now that you know that you're headed towards Seaview. So about... Hey, uh, Go ahead. Oh no, it's... Uh, you know, Timothy, you seem to know these things. Why not uh, fill me in? What would tear this town apart, you know? <laughs> I feel El Capitano might need to uh, seize... Sea view for himself. They were talking about gold and trades, not to me directly, but you know what I'm going for. Is there a, a way we could create a little bit of chaos here if we need to? I guess I could just go with the Capitano to negotiations and clear I... the table, but uh, <laughs> I don't know how to broach this with him. He is a very angry, scared little man. I'm, like... I'm fine. We have an accord. It's no problem, uh-huh. but uh-huh. you know. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. I got you. Timothy was like mid sip as he came over, and like I think, <laughs> like he actually like got some of his like rum like stuck up his nose. Was like, oh god, wasn't expecting this fuck. But all right, um, uh, yeah, all right. Here's the thing. You kind of freak me the fuck out. I I listen. I'll be real. You're the first one I've seen. Uh, still getting used to a lot of things. Uh. I mean, personally, kind of don't want to lose a job that I just got. And I think causing chaos this early into, let's say, our adventures here may be a bad idea. Just, I don't what, know. Uh, what not. is an adventure if not for, uh, you know, uh, 
chaos. The chaos that comes with it. Yeah. It always good stuff. Ah. You know? Listen, I, for one, am down to cause some chaos. But... I'm not, I'm not saying I'm searching out the chaos, uh -huh. but if El Capitano asks us for us, we should be prepared. Mm. You know, so we are useful. <laughs> Earn our keep. I mean, yeah. Uh... I mean, TLDR, we're going to a place that's got, a uh, like, four yeah. rollers. And, like, he just gives him the TLDR of, like, hey, this yeah, is what I know. that's fine. He's mostly, uh, just pressuring you for future influencing, just to see ah. how you'd feel about an uprising. Ah, 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 I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, he's just, like, you gotta get enough alcohol in me if I'm gonna do an uprising. Plus, also, uh. like, you know, I got a job. I kind of want to keep the job. You know, the job may be to uh, kill innocents sometimes. You all right with that? or Fuck I'm no. just trying to figure out your, your limits, your your safety net, uh, or whatever the word is that they use in this plane. We don't really have them, you know, in the abyss. Timothy, like, squints a little bit, takes another sip of his rum. Ah. Uh. They kind of come as they go, right? Comes to the territory. Uh. I mean. I could cause some crime. But no, 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 no. We're on a job. We are on a job, and I don't want to flirt with getting thrown into whatever fucking situation you were in. Oh, I've been in so many situations. It's not even funny. Uh, but we'll, I, don't... I will tell you stories over drinks sometime when we are wealthy from Plunder. Now that I will look forward to. All at right, this point, go, uh, at this point, the, uh, <laughs> the bosun, Garnicor, comes up behind you. She's like, well, what do we have here? So, um, it looks like uh, we got some idle chatter here, don't we? How about uh, if you're going to be, if you're going to be a little bit idle... Yeah, I got a, I got a job for you. How about you come over? Um, come over here. Let me show you something. And she walks yeah. over to the edge of the to the edge edge of the ship. Yeah, fuck it. Timothy walks over. So uh, these waters you see down below, mm -hmm. they 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 can uh, they have quite the bit of useful. Well, let's just say that there's 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 a, there's a bit of useful resources down there. So, if you're gonna get, you're gonna be a little chatter, uh, if you're gonna be a little idle, how about um you can put your you can put yourselves to work here, and um, let's see if we can get, we can't gather some of these resources, eh? Now, what this means is that for this this book for this whole second arc. Whenever there is travel time between islands, and there will be quite a bit of travel time between these islands, once during that entire travel, so regardless of how long it is, once during that travel, I, I can have each of you make a roll. Now, you can't aid one another, so you'll each individually have to make a roll. Now, what this will let you do is they'll let you gather marine resources. Now, those marine resources will be used later. I'm not going to tell you how or why, but I will say they will be used later. So it is pretty important that you gather some. Now, again, you can do this at any point, and I will, on each leg of the journey, you can make this, you can make this check. This will, cons this will be considered your downtime efforts. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> It's, it doesn't mean that you can't do other downtime activities, so you can do your other rest and your other downtime stuff if you want. This is just something that you can do in addition. And any resources you gather will be added. And, and they'll all be tallied up to later. Now, what this is, is that when you make successes, you can gather, you get one, what's called, we're going to call them a kelp points. A crit success will get you two kelp points. Ooh. A failure... No harm, no foul. A crit failure is a negative kelp point. Okay. And then and then so on and so forth. I will tell you how many you've you've gathered at the for each leg, and then those will be tallied up. 
and then we'll see how much you gather for the entirety of book two. Now, how you do this is by making one of five checks. You can choose whatever five you want. This could be athletics. Okay. Crafting. Nature. Survival. Or sailing lore. Now, for the two newbies, mm -hmm. generally, not always, but generally the rule of thumb is that any lore checks have a lower difficulty than your straight up skill checks. So if, if you do have a lore check, chances are that it's probably going to be more prudent to roll that lore check unless your skill check is significantly higher. If we don't have lore in that particular category, is it just a flat D twenty, or is that don't just don't pick that? No, you you you, you can't you can't roll it. The other ones aren't card. aren't lore though. Okay, Ath cool. Athletics and stuff. All right, just wanted to check. I wasn't quite sure how lore worked. Okay. Unless you're a bard, because bards get special abilities. Mm -hmm. Also, they I'm can roll. Up. They can <laughs> roll lore for different things. I'm typing up a storm on my end. I'm keeping super thorough notes for this. <laughs> Let's go. Well, that's good because um, they Rachel's notes last came time. in. Rachel's yeah. notes came in majorly handy. I um, used to take so many notes that I uh, wouldn't pay attention to the game and wasn't enjoying it. So now I take very quick jot notes, like the ones that I posted in chat. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just getting like character summaries and stuff written down okay. mainly. <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're good. So, um, Notes are good. So yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and start making these marine resource checks, you can uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, do you want them hidden? No, these can be op these can be out in the open. That's fine. Said nature was one of the valid ones, right? So yes, let me go over them again. Yes, please. So that would be athletics, okay. crafting, nature, or survival, or sailing lore if you have it. Okay. Ooh. Oh, All right. well done. Let me do my nature roll. Let's see how this goes. Uh, Holy shit, guys. God damn, a 31 oh, of give us, so give, give, give us those kelp points. Okay. <laughs> give me so, that kelp. <laughs> so, um, we're, we're going we're gonna to have to remember as well that this is an audio medium. Yeah. So our audience can't see what we rolled, but we can go over it. So Zaba rolled... A, let me click on it. An 18 for a total of 31 on athletics. Vesuviac. Something's good in the water. <laughs> Vesuviac rolled a 17 for a total of 28 on nature. Sill rolled a 14 for a total of 23 with sailing. And uh, Timothy rolled a 16 for a total of 22 with nature. Is this us jumping, like, going jumping in the water and harvesting this, or just throwing down so, um, fishing things? Let me read the actual skill. It says, you scan the sea for useful beds of kelp um, at or just below the surface, hook them, and pull them in. Once the kelp is hauled in, it must be quickly preserved to retain its useful properties. So this is you hauling in kelp and then preserving it. Okay. So this would get you, let's see here. And it's safe so, to presume that Zaba would notice that Timothy brings in the least, right? Well, let's, let's see here. So Zaba, you got a critical success. So that's two kelp points. Somebody can track this down for me, please. You got it. Vesuviac, that's a normal success for one. Sill. You rolled sailing lore. That's still just a normal success for one. And Timothy, also a normal success for one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So a total of five. You find both twine kelp and netweed. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> twine kelp is the most common resource that you can find in these waters. It's mostly used for rope making. Less common than twine kelp is netweed, which is, fi is which is a fibrous type of seaweed that is easily pulled into thin, tough netting useful for fishing and many other endeavors. 
So you got yourself uh, some netweed and some twine kelp. Do we need to keep track of the types of things it. we find, or just okay. or how I, much yeah. of I wrote each it down item? as well? But I just yeah. I'll trust okay. you guys. <laughs> and I, I can also, I think I can also pull this right here. I also have a table where I can track. Ooh, that's Ooh. So you have one twine kelp and one netweed. Okay. Boom. Perfect. Well done. So yes, you, Zaba could see that um, he didn't haul in much more than the other two. Oh, but I still hauled in more, no. Well, than the other three, I should say. I was going to say. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're very useful. Um, ah. See, we will get along, you and me, Sil. We are, we are friends now, no? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair enough. We'll get there. Or, you know, something could happen. We'll see. <laughs> Sir, are you baking on him meeting his untimely demise? Hold on, wait. <laughs> Sil's been through a lot. Hey, yeah. I understand. I get it. <laughs> so, the this happens over the course of the four-day travel that you're able to haul in this kelp and this... Um, netweed. After the four days, you find yourselves arriving into Sea View. Sea View, as you pull in, it's a bustling port town. There are tall buildings of stone and brick. There is a palpable excitement among the crowd. The characteristic smells of the fine cooking that the Orpox are really mm. quite known for. You know, the fresh bread, the spiced meats, the scent of rich cheeses, as well as many, many other smells, fill the air. The Orpox of Sea View are known as much for their cooking as their industriousness, however. Uh, Sea View's ruling council all meet in in high chambers on a bluff overlooking the city. The walk up to high chambers isn't long, but it's long enough for the word of distinguished visitors to spread. So you get functionaries at the high chambers are very quick to usher you in. Um, into the meeting with the, with the Seaview Council and they introduce yourselves. But yeah, the, as you're walking up, you can hear like folks be like, oh, is that, is, 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 is that them? I think that's, did they come in on the Chromatic Queen? You know, just those little whispers from the crowd. It's like this oh, is a chromatic queen. Oh, Poppy von Barnacle. Blah, 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 blah. You know, just the, you could pull out these these words as the, as like the hushed whispers happen. And the as I mentioned, the functionaries usher you into the into the chambers of the Sea View Council, and they introduce them. So sitting before you, you see you are introduced to. Pumbus Narheel, Gunlu Pongo, Manamo Galahu, and Pelabori Karnahar. And I can give can you, you pictures. Can you type those? Yeah, I will type, type those. Yeah, I, I will no type idea those. where to start with spelling those. <laughs> I will type those and I will give you some pictures here. Ooh. Fantasy names are crazy, man. <laughs> so this handsome fellow is Pumbus, and I can, I'll have you go ahead and um, describe... Oh, wait, that's the wrong picture. <laughs> oh, God! Another that's, sleet! That's the wrong picture. Delete. They've been with us the whole time! No way! <laughs> you can go ahead and describe this handsome fellow to um, our audience. All right. I'm going to hit you guys with the real simple version, and then somebody can get more elaborate. Uh, imagine Hugh Jackman from Les Mis, except for he's an Orpok. It's he actually... really likes the color blue, like a lot. Blue hat. Yeah, he's wearing like blue a blue, coat. like poppers outfit almost. I would describe it as. Oh yeah. Um, thick, shaggy, like mutton chops. You know, one floppy ear, so you know he's chill. <laughs> you know he's ready to party. Yeah, you know, Gunlu doesn't look too serious. 
Uh, you mean Plumbus. Plumbus. Gunglu. Plumbus. Gun- the second Gun- one. Gunglu looks like uh, she's yes. all business, man. Though she looks like she looks like the librarian. If your librarian was a pretty pig lady, uh, <laughs> and also could potentially let her hair down for a fun party night. <laughs> Oh, oh my there's god. a nan or path. Oh my gosh. Uh <clears throat> Who wants to go Before wants we to take Mon- Monano Galahue? I've got this. So this guy looks like a carnival barker. He's got a whole purple thing going. He's got a purple coat with a yellow bow tie. He's got like those yellow like shoulder pauldrons with the fuzzies on them, like on the military uniform. Yeah, that one's. Um, he's got a purple little curled mustache, purple eyebrows, and like a some hair coming behind his ears. And he's got a little purple top hat with yellow stripes and a star. <laughs> I this man this would scam. This man would scam you out of twenty dollars in a heartbeat. He looks like the kind of guy who goes, "Come on, come on, come everybody! It's time for the games." <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh... And lastly, we have a Gamayan. So, hot take here: this may be our hottest Gamayan yet. No, I'm about to say, ma'am, ma'am, hi. You're very pretty. She yeah, looks so... like. Oh my god, what's the... She looks like the Madam from Haunted Mansion, almost, kind of vibes. I can't think of her name. I'm getting that vibe from her. Madam... I can't think of her name. So, what we're seeing, that you guys are not, is we're looking at uh, a Gamayan, female, um, with green body feathers, um, and then on the top of her head, kind of pluming out, like a... almost like a pixie cut. Um, She has purple and it looks like some white from the roots so white at the roots moving into like purple feather tips um and then a a tight like choker style necklace with a matching gem to her feathers that's her madame lenota or leo i can't say her name but i was trying to figure out her vibe that same energy i feel the same energy off that woman yeah very mystic yeah. Madam Leota from Thank the Haunted you. Mansion, yeah. Yeah. So as soon as you're, as they are introduced, the most corpulent and obese of the council members, Councillor Monino, removes his small top hat and holds it to his chest in an ostentatious display of reverence. Well, of course we all know Gustavus Galahue, founder of Seaview. He was unequaled explorer, as well as an unequaled epicurean collecting recipes from across the aisles. No other Orpak has traveled as far or has done as much as the illustrious personage. Now the Gamayan member, Counselor Pelabori, fluffs her feathers and adds icily, Three full sentences, and you haven't even yet mentioned that Gustavus Galahue is your Manchester, Mar- Monino. You're afflicted with an uncharacteristic humility today. The most academic looking of the counselors, of the council, Counselor Gunlu, that's the librarian one that we, <laughs> we just talked about, ignores her colleague's snide remark and interjects, Oh, that Gustavus founded the great university called the Academy of Tastes? It's great. Its graduates included the best cooks and brightest scholars in Seaview. Ah, including yourself, Gunlu, grumbles the Gamayan. The last council member, Councillor Pumbus, he's the Hugh Jackman looking one, <laughs> is clearly running low on patience, clears his throat. <clears throat> but to the matter at hand, esteemed visitors, although the Academy of Taste has hundreds, Perhaps even thousands of Gustavus's recipes, expanded by generations of scholars. It also holds Gustavus's enormous collection of maps, ones he drew while exploring the islands. You should consult your cartographic archives. Tell the university staff that we sanctioned your visits, and they should accommodate you. At this point, uh, Kalupi's like, Well, there you have it. I told you I'd get you access. 
Well, um, you can go along to your books and maps, and I'll stay here and negotiate with these counselors. You know, it's ruler to ruler stuff. Hey, uh, Capitano, you uh, want me to stick around and give you backup in case you need it? <laughs> you think I need backup? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> One sword can only do so much against a dozen spears. Or, I believe that is how the saying goes. Well, I appreciate... I appreciate the vote of non-confidence. Not. Okay, I got this. All and right, he, yeah, you know, let your feathers get ruffled. I'm just trying to be a nice guy, you know. But yeah, let's go to this book place or whatever. I'll be no help there, I'll be honest. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can go look at your books and your maps, and uh, you can come back here, and uh, I'll, I'll be here. Council members! And he closes the door. That was useful. Real um, pleasant guy. Any of you happen to be academically inclined? I guess I um, forgot to ask. If Doctor it's... always, you know... If it's, if, it, if it's in the works of religion, I can give it a look. Uh, esoteric folk tales? I got those. Yeah, it seems like the realm of maps. You, you guys know maps? I give know my second. way around nature fairly well. If I could maybe give it a shot, would survival work for this? Let me get there. Uh, yeah, that seems right. Um, I also know things. <laughs> I drink and I know things. What exactly are we looking for? Um, Procta said to look for maps and then maybe compare them to other maps. Yeah, so, um, in the copy, in the copy of the journal that you have, so Poppy wrote down, obviously, you know, that you can find the other pieces of the gem on the islands. Now, the problem is, is that the maps that she drew in her journal are very undefined and very vague. So what Procta suggested was that maybe you go find a better map and compare them to make sure you're looking in the right places. I see. So now each the, island has one. The best maps out of anywhere are here at the campus. Mm. Because Gustavus was a renowned cartographer, as well as cook. Well, but much like myself, you know. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a hobbit. And I just thought of an ending to my book. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> How long did it take for you to figure that one out? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Bilbo. You only <laughs> lived to be 111 years old to figure that. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right, so we reached this library. Yep. <laughs> we um, do that. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. So you, uh, he you, head you head on over to the campus. And the campus, you know, is... Um, it's it's a campus. The Academy of Taste is, if you're from the islands or you've spent any time on the islands, you would have gathered that it is one of the most highly regarded and most prestigious universities on all of the Indigo Isles. Founded 200 years ago in the first wave of Orpox settlements when the Orpox moved to the island. The founder, Gustavus Scalahue, like I mentioned, was a very talented cartographer and cook without peer. Like, world-renowned cartographer and cook. More than this, um, he was also uh, an avid collector of recipes. So, in order to collect all of his maps and his recipes, he's founded this university. The academy itself is made of stately stone towers that rise above the city. There's a large clock tower 
that rings several times a day. Strangely enough, it's not on the hour, but it rings on the seven meal times that the Orpox observe. <laughs> Now, the most, most of the buildings, like I mentioned, are made of stone and brick, paneled with dark, rich wood that regularly is polished and has been for generations at this point. So you can, you can imagine just how, how uh, glossy that, dark, that rich wood is, having Ooh. been polished regularly for 200 years. Um, professors everywhere... Statues, portraits, commemorative plaques. That's this the whole. It's your it's your typical university that you can imagine. Now, as you come through, you are you are introduced to a Sioux scholar. Now, what's strange here is that you're not introduced to the dean of cuisine, the head of the school. Instead, who stands before you is the Sioux Scholar, the, de- the Dean's second in command. And I want you to go ahead and give me perception checks each. Now, m- roll these secret if you can. Okay. The Dean of Machine. The, the Dean of Cuisine, yes. Oh my god, that's so freaking good. In, in secret to you or just to ourselves? So, um, blind GM roll. Okay. Blind GM roll. Okay. Yes. Uh, and, and it is perception. perception. Which you'll find on your on the on the front page. It's on your main on your main character page. In the left hand bar. There yes. it is. Or yeah. or your HUD should be up now that your tokens are on the on the map. Okay, I think I figured that out. I've done it privately. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. Well done. Each you guys one have of found you figured out. That's a you there got you it. go. Each one of you. Each one of you as the as you're introduced, the um, the Sioux scholar introduces him, himself as Limbin Gunamar. He's like, oh, 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 well, oh, well, welcome to the the academy. Um, you can tell that there's something particularly worrying this this gentleman. Um, th- each one of you can tell that. Now, in addition... Does Zaba think it's him? N- no. As a matter of fact, okay. Vis- both Vesuviak and Zaba can tell that based off of his eye movements constantly flickering around his sur- the surroundings... The two of you realize that the scholar's worry has nothing to do with you for that something else is worrying them. So Syl and Timothy both know that he, that the scholar's worried. Not sure why. Mm-hmm. Vesuviak and Zaba can tell that the scholar is worried about something other than you for. He's hey, like, uh, so so. Uh, me, I'm sorry. So what what can I what can I help you with? Um, we're here to we, see some maps. Council oh. said we can come in. Oh, maps. Yeah, yeah, maps. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The is this a bad time? Though? Yeah, are you good? Yeah, the the, the it it seems to be the problem, little guy. <laughs> the the scholar kind of pats the sweat on his forehead with, um, what looks like a tea towel. Oh, um, n- nothing. Um, but ma- ma- maps, you said. Yeah, we have several, several maps. Uh, Gustavus Scalahue, our, our illustrious founder, had quite a collection, and they're now in the archive wing of the library. There's, and there's a pause. The scholar pauses for a moment, raising his hand to his chin. Well, uh, t- technically, I, I I suppose that the archive wing is is well, it's, it's haunted. But the ghost there doesn't doesn't hurt anyone. He just Timothy gets a... perks up, and he like looks. He's like, "I'm sorry. Hold on. Did you say haunted?" Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, the ghost. But the ghost. I promise you, the ghost doesn't hurt anyone. Just gets a bit peevish and tries to scare people away. Um, 
And if you're firm with him, he'll leave you alone. How long have y'all been dealing with a ghost? Uh, I don't know. It's a couple weeks, but, um, I mean, we have, like I said, if you're firm, that's fine. Um, if you're going to go, if you're going to go in the archive wing, I just, we do have some rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of old documents in there. So, um, uh, so, so there's no, 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 no water. N- no fire and um right. of course uh I'm, and i'm sorry to say this uh and he swallows and gulp N- no eating oh i can deal with that hey was subiac are you a, a fire kind of dragon thing yeah <laughs> uh vesuviac looks at still and goes yeah, unfortunately, I uh, count for the fire thing on two accounts. Two accounts? I'm a magma dragon, and I'm a fire cleric. Oh. I can keep it in. I don't have to burn things. We can, uh, you know, just wrap you in a big, you know, rug or cloak or something. You that know, won't be necessary. You know, like a burlap cloak, it'll extinguish the flames if they start to get a little too spicy. That won't be necessary. I can control myself. Hey, uh, can I ask, why haven't you done anything about this ghost? Yeah, I'm sure Surely there's priests and- Well, it's just that the, the ghost, like I said, doesn't harm anybody, and it's just, just a little grumpy. Could you and, go um, get the maps for us? Well, I, I would, but I have some other urgent- matters I need to attend to. I really need to go talk to campus security. Um, so yeah. I can Why? I can tell you that, well, the archive wing is just right there. And he points to a set of double doors. And he points to the double doors to your to your right. His left. Okay. It's like, and I, but I need to go talk to campus security. Um, there's seems to have been there seems to have been a murder. Sure. That, that happens. Timothy, Reason like, doesn't happen here. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hey, Quick, it wasn't me. We just got here. How the hell could it have been you? Hey, people always blame the demon. You know, they go, "Hey, it's a demon. He's big. He's scary. He murders people." But I'm a good guy. It wasn't me. I mean, good for you. You do you want like a, a you tried sticker? Like, you know I what? just no. want you to understand I am person too. Oh well, yeah, of course. We're all people. Uh. Anyways, uh, Timothy looks to him. Do you have a- any idea who the hell this ghost is? I, I'm, I know I'm asking, but this is kind of important. Uh, I, no, I don't. It just showed up a couple weeks ago and just kind of hasn't left. Do you want it gone? Because, uh, I mean, I could help out with that, maybe. It would, um... <laughs> It would it would make it would make studying in the archives a lot more a lot easier. All right, we have maps to look for, and I got something I can help out with. And what will you uh, give to us if we extinguish this ghost's essence? Well, um, you can look at the maps, and I if you if the ghost happens to have brought anything, you could keep it? Uh, I see what you are saying, but uh, what if you you cooked us a good meal in exchange for killing ghosts? We're going to look at maps either way. Uh, 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 um, sure, you, you, you're more than... Yeah, I could I could invite you to a, a, a lunch? Sure. Let's have a luncheon. No, all right, mean, let's go. Oh, oh well, okay. Oh, you might be kind of busy no. with this whole murder thing. I mean, but... yeah, there was a whole murder, but I mean, we'll let you go. Uh, campus and... security's got it under control. We kill ghosts. We find map. We get out of here. Yeah. Um, sorry to keep you so long. Yeah, sorry about that, man. We'll we'll make sure not to burn things looking, you know, pointedly at Vesuviac. 
Vesuviac just shakes his head and starts walking towards the archive doors. And I, I unpause oh, the go ahead. I unpause the the game so you can. Oh, cool! You can uh, make does your way. the the scholar leave? Oh yeah, but yes. All right. Wait, as no, soon as he's gone, I go. All right, so we're gonna go look at this murder, right? I mean, there's we have the, got there's things no... to do. You go look at the murder, and we'll go look at the books. And I'm gonna go look at the ghosts. But if well, more the people with the books. start dying. We are going to blame you. I mean... Hey, I have done nothing to provoke such hatred. I can go with him mm. if it makes it necessary. But, but you're the one that knows about maps. We'll see. Okay, okay. You know what? I show you I'm team player. We go, <laughs> we kill the ghost. We collect the maps, and then we go and examine the murder. You know, just to make sure it's not a... Uh, You'll know one of our companions. What if it is, you know, one of the twins? What if Hippin is we down? Just you know, they they got are a cook. Here. We don't. Hey, pirates are crazy, man. We don't have to kill the the ghost. No, we don't have to. I'm not saying we have to kill the ghost, but let's let's investigate. Let's see what's causing the spirit to appear. Maybe I can help appease it. Things like that. I, yeah. I know you guys are new to this mission, but like, we do have a pretty important task already. Like, we don't want to get too distracted, so you know, we'll yeah. see how things go, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Hey, you are the boss. Yeah, that's that's so it's just in the back of the head. It's like, I hired three chuckle fucks. God damn it, I'm ruined. Wait, was the I archives... forgot to get the scholar. Was the archive straight Fuck. ahead or was it to the right? Uh, to the right, I just that big stairwell that's like on the map right in front of us. I just want to walk up it and go that way. It has an arrow. It's it has an arrow to indicate that the stairs go up. Oh, yeah. okay. It is, it is you know, that's, very. That's, let's like go that's, this way. <laughs> I imagine that's the direction of the murder. The murder. Just throwing it out there. I tried to split the party. You wouldn't let me. Yeah, I could. But I really don't <laughs> want to lose Zaba yet. <laughs> yeah, day one you lose Zaba. Also, by the way, I, sh I shared some art for the Sioux Scholar. Oh, oh yes. See. I want to see. If you want to describe that for our audience. Little guy. I'm a particular fan of his um, bib thing. It's very cute. It's got a muffin on it. <laughs> it does have a muffin on it. His hat's so we're faced with another Orpok. Uh, this one seems to have been of... Uh, I'd guess higher age based on what appears to be some liver spotting on the skin. He's got a little gray goatee and a long mustache and bushy eyebrows. Uh, he's wearing some fancy looking shoes. Um, I would describe them if I could. They kind of remind me of guns. Honestly. <laughs> he has gun legs. Yeah. yeah. And he's got this interesting hat that's kind of like if you were to uh, take an umbrella and instead of the center being really small, you made the center part really big, and the umbrella parts fan upwards. Um, he looks very stern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he I, was I sterner than I French. thought. Yeah, so like he's it's almost like a graduate's cap, but instead of like a square, it's like a pentagram or a hexagon or pentagon, not a pentagram, pentagon. <laughs> All right, you opening up the doors to the archive wing? Yeah. Who wants to click on the door? Uh, I can do it. All right, there you go. I did it. Wow. So you you click you open the door <laughs> click on the door you open the door, <laughs> and you see dark wooden shelves built into every wall of this large room, even around the thick pillars that undoubtedly are used to support the upper levels of this old university building. The shelves are jammed with all sorts of books and scrolls and folios and binders and all sorts of things. There's three small tables, each with a chair, uh, small even for a Gamayan, to, um, to, consider, to be considered comfortable. Um, they stand among the shelves in the archive wing. Everything bears a fine layer of dust and there's a forlorn sense of abandonment 
It's almost like hardly anyone uses this wing anymore just because of the dust. All right, go find your maps. Sophia walks in. Yeah, Timothy's gonna walk in as well. God, this room's very pretty. Sorry, I'm looking at this map. It's very pretty. Oh, just just, just you wait, Lunar. Just you yeah. wait till you see some of the art later on in this part of the book. Yeah, like Timothy, like the moment he walks in, he takes like that deep like inhale and then exhale. Is like <sighs> right where I belong. Uh, Smells very dusty. Yeah, I was perfect. gonna say, don't sneeze. <laughs> Nah, he, he looks like he just took that in like a champ. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Are there any, like, like And again, labels? as soon as you step into this room, you feel that sense of abandonment. Like, there's something that just left. And so that, that there's something that your character just feels like there's a part of you that's missing as mm. soon as you step into this room. Well, there's already a lot of things missing with Timothy, but like that's besides the point. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh God, I want to use one of my archetype thingies because I got ghost hunt and shit. But I'm like, I don't know if that's the time right now. I am but a fool, but a wee bob. I th think we should just get to the maps and look yeah, over let's... things quickly. Let's find those maps. Uh, did he say where exactly the maps were going to be at or not? Nah? Just that if they would be anywhere, they'd be in this room. Okay. I guess, do we make a perception check or how how, so, how would we go about yeah, if this? You want, if you want to start looking at the maps, you'd have to start, you know, cross-checking mm -hmm. with the notes that you got and the letters from Procta. And it, it was it's going to take a, quite a bit of time. Let me roll that to myself. It'll probably take you about three hours to properly search through this this wing, this library, to make sure that you get everything. And I'm going to need some successful checks. So, yeah, perception would be would be the one to look for. Mm -hmm. You could you could use um, a lore check. And if you're actually using the journal, then you could probably use, if you have like geography or society or survival or nature, you're going to use the journal. So perception, if you're not going to use the journal, you're just going to do it straight up. Now you uh, can also, multiple people can do this simultaneously. So I would like to use the journal if I can, but I don't have it with me. And that's, that still has that. Yeah, so will definitely not give up the journal. But that makes more sense. more than happy to let you page through it as, you know. Yeah, no, Vesuviak wouldn't take it. He just wants to use it to see if he can kind of figure out what we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, like, lore skills. I guess it wouldn't fall under... You can, you, and if anybody yeah. wants to aid, instead of just doing their own searching on their own, you can definitely do that. So, so... If you wanted to aid Vesuviak, if you're if you're, if you're aiding by with a knowledge check, probably not. I well, don't like I said, yeah. Uh, just I'm doing a, do. I'm doing a nature check on this one. Should I just go ahead and roll it? Well, hold up, no, not yet. So okay. as soon as you actually start looking through the books, that's when the ghost starts to materialize. And you immediately kind of see a whirlwind of dust kind of kick up from the center of the archive wing as this ghost materializes before you. And let me share this art. Ghost, ghost, ghost. Do Very cool. Either of you, either of you want to uh, describe this since you two are the ones in the room? Sorry, I'm looking at this art. This this rules. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, where did it get posted? It's, All the it's... art in this adventure is so good. I'm so excited. Uh, it's in the actual tabletop itself. You should see it. It's like literally on your screen, like a pop up. Oh, okay. It? Yeah, I did see it. Do you want to describe it or should I? Uh, you go for it. 
Uh, so it has a very like wispy like nature to it. It's it has kind of like a venom feel with how its face looks. Uh, yeah, but ven- instead yeah, of venom like, from Spider Man. Yeah. Yes, venom from Spider Man. But instead of it being like the whites for its eyes, imagine it being like a almost like a fire within it. Uh, it uh, like I said, it looks very wispy with like maybe blue. Uh, it's originally like dark dark blue and then leads to white, uh, nice whiter and brighter shades of blue towards the end. Uh, it's got a book. It's got a bunch of books. Yeah, you read a book. He read a book. He getting spicy. Uh, he also looks like he has some sort of like, f- maybe like flare ish or like fire within himself. That's yeah, it looks what like I'm he's made of was. smoke a little bit. Yeah, that's right. It just looks like it's smoke. Yeah, and there's like it's a like quell. if the the mist monster from Lost wasn't a hundred percent let down. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, and there's a, there's like books and pages and like a scroll case kind of floating around it and. It's holding like a quill. Yeah. And so what is a quill? let me go ahead and put everybody into combat. Oh, shit. As we're going to go ahead and do that. But <clears throat> before we get into any combat, I think we're going to go ahead and call this one an episode. And we're just going to have, well, you know what we say. You know what we say. May your party never end. May your party never end. May your party never end. Bye, guys. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.